So hopefully you look through the exponential functions and you feel pretty confident about what an exponential function is and what the natural exponential function is or the natural exponential base. We need an inverse for an exponential function. And unfortunately, because an exponential function is what we call transcendental, or in other words, not algebraic, it's a little more difficult to work with. And a lot of students don't like logarithms, right? I always use the mantra, a logarithm is an exponent. Okay? That's all it is. A logarithm is just an exponent. We just turn it into an exponent, or we turn it into a logarithm. So I have a function f at x equals b to the x. Okay, that's an exponential function. We just spent a half hour looking at that. What we want to do is we want to somehow get the inverse of this. So instead of f at x, what I did was I wrote it as y equals b to the x. The definition of a logarithmic function, okay, or an inverse, is that if y equals b to the x, we say log base b of y is equal to x. Okay. Remember I just said a logarithm is an exponent, right? Well, x is an exponent. Logarithm is exponent, okay? The b is the base, okay? The b is the structure holding up the x. So log base b, base b, is an exponent. And then the other number that's by itself just sort of gets juxtaposed in there, okay? So that's the easiest way to remember it. Logarithm is an exponent, so it's always going to equal your exponent when you're done. Okay? One of the first things we should probably do is learn how to compute what a logarithm is. Okay? And then what we can do is we can look at the graphs of functions. Okay? These are fairly easy. Right? One of the first things we should, we should do is if I give you a logarithm, you should be able to evaluate it with and without a calculator. Okay? So, take a look at this, and I just want to evaluate. Let's say I have something like log base 2 of 8. All right. I know there's some of you guys watching this, and you're saying, oh, okay, well, that's just 3, okay, because I just know it. And some of you guys are looking at that, and they're like, I don't know, I've never even worked with a logarithm too well. Right? Here's my suggestion. If you ever want to evaluate a logarithm, set it equal to x, because you don't know what it is. Remember we said the phrase, a logarithm is an exponent. So x is going to be your exponent. Okay? And think to yourself, what's the base in this expression? Well, the base is logarithm base 2. Okay? So if I was to rewrite this as an exponential expression, the way I would write it is that 8 is equal to base 2 with an exponent of x. Okay? Logarithm is an exponent. Okay? So base b is your 2, x is your exponent. Okay? I bet you if you think about it really hard, you could say, oh, okay, well, isn't 8 really 2 to the third power? And you'd want a base of 2. So since 8 is 2 to the third, 2 to the third equals 2 to the x. And I bet you you know what x is at this point because since there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the exponents, 3 has to be equal to x. So that's how you can basically evaluate a logarithm okay, for a nice one. Okay. What if you want to check that? What you can do is you can use something called a change of base formula. So, let's use a change of base, and you may remember the change of base, you may not remember the change of base. If not, no big deal. Let me show you how to do it. Log base b of x. If you were to use your calculator, okay, let's say you're not feeling too confident about your answer. You can write this as log base a, any base you want, a, of x divided by log base a of b. In other words, any log you want. My suggestion is just use the log that's in your calculator. All right? So in your calculator, what I'd like for you to do is to go back over here and type in log 
So just hit your log button, should come up with a parenthesis, eight, close the parenthesis, and then backslash log button, parenthesis, two. Okay. Since eight is the x and two is the base b, okay, you can just use your calculator to cheat. And then what you should end up with in your calculator, so it should come out with a three, okay? Hopefully it does, okay? If not, you can get your money back for this video. All right, so that's a basic evaluation of a logarithm, okay? Now that was an easy one, okay? I mean, most of us can see, okay, we know the relationships of powers of two with respect to eight. We know that two to the third is eight, no big deal, all right? What if we start throwing negatives and what if we start throwing fractions? And that's when students don't like that. Okay, but no big deal. How about this example? Let's say I have log base 3 of 1 over 27. No. All right. Now, we don't like that one too much because it's a fraction. Don't worry about it. Let's do it the same way we just did. In fact, let's find the answer first. Let's go ahead and cheat and use the change of base formula. So I'm going to say change of base first. So let's get the calculator's help. And I'm going to put log. And before you insert that, what do you think is going to go inside the parentheses? Is it going to be the 1 27th or is it going to be the 3? Well, hopefully you said it's going to be the 1 over 27 because that's going to be the x value what we're trying to figure out. So it's going to be log 127 divided by log of base b, which is 3. If you type that in your calculator, okay, hopefully what you end up with is going to be a negative 3. So the answer is negative 3, and that's great for us to know what the answer is. But what if for some reason you're not allowed to use a calculator on a quiz or an exam? Uh-oh. Well, then it becomes a little more difficult for us to figure this out in our heads. Let's see the algebraic or the analytic way of getting this. So, log 3 of 1 over 27 equals x. You want to change this into exponential. We don't like logarithmic. We like exponential. Remember the phrase, logarithm is an exponent. So this is log. This is our exponent. This is our base b, which is 3. So the way I think about it is that 1 over 27 equals 3 to the x. Okay. We need to make 1 27th look like 3 somehow. Not an easy task. Let's get rid of the reciprocal. We know that anything that's flipped over can really be written like a negative exponent. So in other words, Instead of 1 over 27, we can write that as 27 to the minus 1 equals 3 to the x. And then you think to yourself, oh, okay, well, what number do I raise 3 to to get 27? Well, you guys know that 3 to the third is 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 more is 27. So I get 3 to the third to the minus 1. Okay, since 27 is 3 to the third, equals 3 to the x. And hopefully now it's pretty obvious that, remember your exponent rules, if you raise a power to a power, you multiply those together. So we're going to wind up with 3 to the minus 3 equals 3 to the x, or in other words, negative 3 equals x. And the reason we can say that is because, once again, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So hopefully these are helpful for you to be able to evaluate what a logarithm is. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to say, okay, well, now that I know how to evaluate a logarithm, what if I have a logarithmic function? How do I graph that function? Okay. So let's take a look at maybe an example of how we can graph a logarithmic function. And let's take a look at what the properties of this logarithmic function might be, just like we did with exponentials. have the function f of x 
is going to be equal to log base 2 of x. And what I want to do is I want to graph that function. All right. Two ways to do it, one of which by hand, one of which by calculator. Let me show you how to put this into your graphing calculator to see what the graph looks like first. Then what we can do is do it by hand, just in case you're not allowed to use a calculator during your quiz or your examination. Okay. So if I was to use the change of base formula, my change of base would say log x divided by log 2. So what you would do is you'd hit your y equals button in your calculator and you put log x divide log 2, just like we did in the previous scenario. Okay. I'm going to guess, although I'm not 100% certain, because I don't have a graphing calculator with me, but I'm going to guess that you guys get a function that's going to look somewhat like this okay. on your graphing calculator might be a little bit different due to the scaling, okay? but hopefully that's about what your logarithmic function looks like. Okay? Now, it's easy to do it by calculators. Okay? Calculators are nice, but let's make sure we can do it by hand. That's what we really care about. Because when we start getting into our Calculus 2 and Calculus 3, our teachers aren't going to have numbers anymore. And it's not going to be easy. We have to know how to do it by hand. Okay? So, remember we said that instead of f at x, y equals log base 2 of x. We also talked about the fact that you could turn a logarithm into an exponent. What's the mantra? Logarithm is exponent. Logarithm is exponent. So why is the exponent? 2 is the base. Think to yourself, what is the exponential form of this going to look like? Is it y squared equals x? Is it x squared equals y? Is it 2 to the x equals y? Is it 2 to the y equals x? There's a lot of different permutations of that. Well, hopefully, since you know that 2 is the base and y is the exponent, you could fathom 2 to the y is equal to x. So instead of having a logarithmic relation, now we have an exponential relation. Exponents we can work with, logarithms we can't. We can make our table of values. Okay. In this scenario, what's easier? Is it easier for us to make up values for x and get values of y? Or is it easier for us to make up values of x or y and get values of x? Well, doesn't it look like I can just plug in for y and get x? So let's make up numbers for y. So I'm going to say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Just like we did in the previous series. We work from the bottom up. So let's start at the 2, and we're going to work all the way up so we get our x. Okay. This is just going to be 2 squared, which is going to be 4. That's easy. This is going to be 2 to the first, which is 2. Okay. So all I'm doing is I'm substituting these values back in for the y. We know 2 to the 0. In fact, anything to the 0 is 1, as long as it's not 0 to the 0. 2 to the minus 1. Okay. We take the reciprocal. That's 1 over 2. 1 over 2 the first, which is 2. And then hopefully you remember from the previous series, 1 over 2 squared is 1 fourth. Okay. So that's my table of values for this exponential, which was derived from this logarithm. So this is really the table that we can utilize to make our graph nice. All right. Let's plot this on a separate graph and see if it looks at least somewhat like what we predicted it to look like. Okay. I have one-fourth negative two. So I'm going to go 
a quarter to the right, and then down two. So this might be my first one. Then I'm going to have one half negative one. I go over half, I go down one. I have one zero. I have two one. And then finally, I have four two. If I play connect the dots, and again, forgive me, because I know my construction isn't going to be that good. But check that out. Even though it's got a few bumps and a few bruises in it, it looks pretty darn close to what we originally suspected that the function's going to look like. Okay. So now we know two ways to graph a logarithmic function. Okay. If we're able to use a calculator, we can just go ahead and figure it out that way. If we're not allowed to use our calculators, what we can do is we can go ahead, change it into an exponential. Once we get to the exponential, we fill in values for y instead of x. Okay? Then what we can do is we can just go ahead and plot it just like we have over here. Okay. Domain and range and asymptotes. Domains all the possible x values. It looks like that the x values are never going to get past the y axis. Or in other words, x will never be negative. So the domain of this is 0 to infinity. The range, well, it's going to go down forever. And it looks like it's going to keep going up, although slowly, but it is going to keep going up forever. So the range is going to be from negative to positive infinity. And then there is an asymptote, but this time instead of a horizontal asymptote, it's a vertical asymptote. Last time we said that the asymptote is going to be y equals 0 for an exponential. For a logarithmic function, instead of y equals 0, the asymptote is going to be when x equals 0. Remember we said that a vertical line, or we, we didn't say it, but in your pre-calculus class, your teacher said x equals 0 is a vertical line. So hopefully this isn't too difficult. The most important part is to make sure that you can change it into the exponential version, graph it using the table, and also check your work by going through and using the change of base form. So what I'd like for you guys to do is to pause the video, see if you can graph a very similar function just by the table of values. See if you can graph this guy, log base 3 of x. So go ahead and pause it. I'm going to keep erasing. And this time when you do it, make sure you try to utilize, instead of using the calculator first, Maybe use the table first, and then when you're done, check. So hopefully you paused, okay, and you went through and you gave it a shot, okay. So here's what I would do. First thing, y, instead of f and x, use y, log 3 of x. Then I would change it into the exponential version. Okay? For the exponential version, okay, say to yourself, Logarithm is an exponent. Y is the exponent, 3 is the base. I have a base 3, I have an exponent of Y, and the X has nothing to do with it, so X is just going to go off to the right. Okay. We're going to make a table of values, just like we did before. I'm going to quickly go through these. You're going to make up values not for X, but for Y. So this is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And hopefully, when you made up your values for this, you got 1 ninth, 1 third, 1, 3, and 9. Let's graph, and then we can be done with the essentials of logarithms. So I'm going to plot. I have a 1 ninth negative 2. Okay, so this is my 1. 1 ninth is really close to our y-axis. 
So I'm going to plot 1 9th and negative 2, very close. Same thing with 1 3rd, negative 1. Then I have a 1 0. Then I'm going to have my 3 1. So I'm going to move right 3, and then up 1. And then finally, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then up 2, right here. Graph. And I missed it. The good news is my marker forgives me. That's what your graph should look like. Think about domain, think about range, think about asymptote. The domain, negative infinity to positive the, I'm sorry, zero to infinity. I apologize. Let's think about exponential. If I wanted to know what the range was, just like the previous, negative in to positive infinity. Finally, if I want to know what the asymptote is, The asymptote is going to be the y-axis, or in other words, x equals zero. Not that this matters in this in the example that I asked you to do, but if I had the graph of 3 to the x, and let me draw that in blue, okay? the graph of 3 to the x roughly is going to look like this. notice about the graph that I constructed in blue, which is f at x is 3 to the x, and this graph, which I'm going to call f at x, is log base 3 of x, which is what we just graphed. Don't they look like that they're reflected? In fact, they're reflected about almost like a diagonal, if you would. So, if I had a diagonal, What's really cool is that these two functions, if I folded along that diagonal, these two functions would just kind of merge together with one another. Okay? No surprise, because didn't we say that they're inverse functions? 3 to the x has an inverse of log 3 to the x. And the reason I constructed this was to just illustrate that they do have characteristics of symmetry, but not about an axis that you're used to. It has symmetry about the line y equals x. Okay. Which hopefully in pre-calculus, your teacher showed you at least a couple of those. Okay. Maybe not the most difficult ones, but this is a graphical version as to why they're inverses. Okay. I'm not going to ask you to prove whether or not they're inverses, just to know that an exponent and a logarithm are inverses. And remember that mantra, logarithm is an exponent. All right. so, what did I get out of this logarithmic section? Make sure you can evaluate a logarithm by hand. Make sure you can evaluate a logarithm utilizing the change of base formula. Make sure for certain that you can graph a logarithmic function and tell me its domain, its range, and its asymptote. And then finally, make sure that you can recognize that the graph of a logarithm is really a reflection of a graph of an exponential along the line y equals x.